Can you lift your voice and tell him what it means to you? Just say something to him. Just lift your voice and say, Jesus, if nothing, if you can't come up with anything else, just say, Jesus, I love you. I worship you. today. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Good, good. Go ahead, Jordan. Good morning and welcome to Life Change Church. We are so glad that you're with us today on this beautiful June morning. Before Pastor gets into the message, here are this week's announcements. Parents, today is the last day to sign your third through sixth grader up for Pastor Penny's preteen camp out. This is coming up on June 7th through 8th, and the cost is $10 per child, and your kids do not want to miss out on this, so get them signed up today. Here's Pastor
Pastor Penny with an announcement on our upcoming Power Up Camp. Hi, I'm Penny, the children's pastor here at LCC. And I'm here to remind you that we have our exciting Power Up Camp coming up soon. It's only about a month away. It's for kids entering kindergarten through sixth grade, and it's on June 23rd through the 26th. Please go online now and sign them up so they can be a part of this adventure. But also remember that my goal is for this to be an outreach to the community. We've already had about six families that signed up online and they noted that they don't regularly attend Life Change Church. We think they probably saw the banner in the field. So that's really exciting. But I want even more. So if you have a place where you could display a flyer or if you want to just grab a stack and then maybe pop them under some windshield wipers as you walk into Kroger's for your groceries, that would be awesome. We just want to get the word out. If that's you, there's a whole stack of them at the information desk. Grab a handful and help us out so we can get as many kids in here and their families to hear about God's love as we can. Again, that's June 23rd to the 26th. Sign up now and help me get the word out. Ladies, I have to let you know that our regular June meeting has been canceled. Instead, though, we are going to go to Life Change Church of Pike County and support them on their first women's meeting. This is going to be on Tuesday, June 18th at 7 o'clock. But there's good news because we are going to take a van there if you need a ride. Please be here at church by 5 o'clock um, so that we can make it up to Pike County by 7. If you need more information, though, on this, or maybe you can't make it here to ride in the van, you can check out our Women of Life Change Facebook page, and it will have the church address, um, the date again, and the time. If you don't have Facebook, there's good news, because you can just find Pastor Jenny, and she'll have all the information for you. Church, mark your calendars, because June 23rd, we are going to have Friends and Family Day. Now, this is a perfect opportunity for you to invite all of your neighbors and all of your friends and all of your family that you have been just itching to invite to church. So please, mark your calendars, June 23rd. Thank you so much for joining us here today at Life Change Church, and please stay connected with us online at lcchurch.tv, on our Facebook page, or download our app on your smartphone or mobile device. Ushers, I want you to get ready to receive the offering, and um, Vince, we'll, we'll get to the, the communion here in a little bit. This is our morning tithe and offering, and I trust that you'll be faithful in your giving this morning. Father, I pray that you'll bless this offering, multiply it, and use it for your glory's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Is this road your traveling?
Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Aren't you glad this morning that uh, uh, God is in the saving business and, and, and he has prepared a place for us to go? Amen. I'm looking forward to heaven. Praise God. Praise God. But until we get there and we cross the other shore, one of the things that uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 says in, in uh, 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 verse 11, it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. How many know that God has given us all a measure? He's given each one of us a measure that we are to walk in. And one of the things that... Uh, it, that God has put on the church and on the pastors and, and leaders of the church is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And uh, as, as you know, we are here. Our mission that God has given Pastor Troy is to glorify God. How many know that we love to glorify God in our worship and our praise and our lives? Preach Christ. And you know we can't get any better preaching than what we sit under week after week after week. Who can say amen to that? Amen. And to experience the life-changing presence of, Christ, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want more of that. How about you? Praise God. So as we are going forward, one of the things that uh, you began thinking about, the elders and pastor began thinking about, about back in the fall is how can we better equip the saints for the work of ministry and uh, you know we do preaching well we do worship well but the equipping part we need to work on that and we are endeavoring over the last several months to put into place a plan to kind of restructure uh, who we are and 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 uh, how we not who we are but how we go about doing the work of ministry uh, one of the things that uh, I know that how many how many here understand that sometimes uh, you get stretched a little thin. Anybody ever been there before where you just you're stretched thin and you feel like you're just not accomplishing what you need to accomplish? Uh, in ministry, that happens as well. And uh, pastor gets stretched thin. I've gotten stretched thin over the years. You can't tell it, I know, but I really have gotten stretched thin. <laughs> over the years and so one of the things that that we uh, looked into is how can we develop a team of people that can help lead the leaders of our church and uh, uh, before we were kind of set up as the pastor the elders and 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 then I would kind of oversee all the ministry leaders um, I was stretched thin and I recognize that and, uh, and and I know that has not been a good thing when God has got so many things in store for my life and for your life, but when we get stretched thin, we can't focus on those things, right? And so we have put together a team uh, that we're calling our lead team, and they're ministry pastors who are going to be helping lead and encourage and equip the leaders of our church who will then equip the saints of our church. And uh, so I want to introduce to you today this new lead team of ministry pastors here at Life Change Church. So uh, I know not all of them are here today, but most of them are, and I want to introduce them to you today. So gentlemen, if you'll just come up here real quick uh, so we can introduce you today to the congregation. <clears throat> All right. This, uh, these, these. There's six. There's six of them, and only uh, four are here today. Uh, but uh, I knew that. Uh, I'm not sure where Jacob is, but I knew that uh, uh, Jeff was going to be on vacation. I put Jeff on the screens real quick, just so you know who Jeff Schmidt is, because Jeff might be looking for you here someday soon. So you, you need to know who Jeff is. And I don't have Jacob's picture because I didn't know Jacob wasn't going to be here. So uh, I'll have to introduce you to him a little later. 
but I wanted to introduce you real quick. Uh, you all know Daniel Laney. Daniel has an anointing on his life, and, and God is using him in a great way. Daniel is going to be a uh, lead over uh, our usher ministry, building our security team, and also our armor bearer team. And uh, he's just going to bring a, a great lead to that whole segment of ministry here. It's hard to believe that that you you know we have an awesome ministry team uh, of ushers here. But uh, to think in this day and age that we need the security teams that we need in place, and uh, then the armor bearer teams, those that will come alongside the pastors and and uh, and help equip them as well in everything that they need. It's just going to be an awesome, awesome thing. So this is Daniel Laney. A lot of you know Darren Large. Darren is going to be overseeing uh, uh, several ministries within the church as well. Darren just brings a lot to the table. He is a great leader, uh, and, and I'm excited to have Darren a part of this ministry team. Darren Large. You know Vince Irvin. Vince has, has, has led our usher team for many, many, many years, and, and uh, we have seen Vince grow over the years, and he is, his hunger and desire to grow in the Lord, and uh, Vince is just an awesome leader, and uh, he is going to be leading several ministries within the church as well. Would you give it up for Vince Irvin? The guy, before I get to you, Brad, the, the guy that we showed on the screen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you here just a second. This is Jeff Schmidt. Uh, Jeff's been coming to the church, he and his wife Lisa, for about a year now. And uh, Jeff is just excited to be leading the mission side of our church. And in that, it's not just missional as you might think, but also in building and equipping teams to go out and share their faith. We need that in this day more than ever. And Jeff has a heart to equip people to be able to be bold and, and share their faith with everyone they come in contact with. And he's putting together a great plan. So that is Jeff Schmidt uh, that will be a part of this lead team as well. And then uh, Jacob Kingsley. Uh, Jacob is not here to, uh, the, in this service. I'm not sure where he's at. But Jacob is going to be overseeing our family life, and that is our children's, our youth, our young adult, uh, our young adult with kids and without kid groups. And uh, uh, Jacob is a millennial, and he's a graduate of Liberty University, and uh, will just bring a great, great, uh, 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 be just a great benefit to this lead team. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, Brad Wells, as you all know, is going to be heading up our pastoral care branch. So if you are sick in the hospital, uh, he or one from his team may be coming to visit you or, or just to do counseling in different areas of ministry within the church, Brad will be leading that part. So this is Brad Wells, and we welcome him to this team. Pastor, I want you to come and, and uh, let's just pray over these men and bless them indeed. I appreciate people who are willing to step up and step in and step out to do what God wants to do. The reality is, in order to continue to move forward and grow, you have to not only have larger buildings, you have to have larger infrastructure. If you don't grow leaders and disciple people, then all you do is put a small crowd in a bigger place. You hear what I'm saying? So we have great people. This team is going to grow as we move forward. This is just the beginning, and it's exciting that in this, this offset stage of what God is doing in the next phase of Life Change Church, God has sent us some cream of the crop. And I thank God for each and every one of them. I want you to stand to your feet and really give a great God bless you to these men that are going to step up and be a part of the working ministry of Life Change Church. I think you can do better than that. Welcome back into a new tier of leadership. Now, everyone remain standing. Here's what I want you to understand, a couple things. Uh, God 
eight, almost 18 years ago, brought me here, anointed me, and uh, placed me as head over this church. Now, Christ is the head of the church. And we understand that you have to have a head over the church. And that's what God has ordained me to be. As such, just as Moses was instructed by God to lay his hands on people and the anointing that was on him would be placed on them to carry out ministry, how many know that still happens today? You hear me? I want to say that again. That still happens today. The point is simple. I'm going to lay my hands on these men and I'm going to pray. And I'm going to believe God to place an anointing of authority and leadership in this ministry. As such, I want you to receive them and listen to them and walk after them just as if I have called you. And if you reject them, you have rejected me. That went over like a lead balloon. You understand delegating authority, don't you? How many are mommies and daddies here? How many grandma and grandpas we got? How many have you ever had children? You know what I'm talking about. Have you ever had a babysitter? What did you say to your children? You obey the babysitter as if I were home. And if you disobey them, then you'll get the same punishment as if you disobeyed me. God delegated authority to the elders and pastor of this church. The elders and pastor of the church are going to delegate authority to them. And how exciting it is to see God multiply what he's doing here at Life Change Church. I want you to agree with me. Everybody lift your hands toward them. Everybody lift your hands and we're going to pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The power of God that rests upon the elders of this church. Elders, come around. I forgot to bring you forward. And I pray, God, that you would place your anointing upon these men. That you would take them to a new level of leadership like they've never been to before. I ask, Lord, that there would be strength and authority in what they do and in what they say. And that the people that are here and the people that come will fall in line and get involved and do what God is doing in and through those you have selected. We anoint them and commission them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And we praise you, Lord, for what you're doing at Life Change Church. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen, amen. and praise the Lord. Give the Lord a shout of praise and let's celebrate. The goodness of our God. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. We're going to get to communion in a little bit. Right now, I want to read a scripture and take a moment to expound upon it. <clears throat> this service is a little different <clears throat> this morning, and it is, it is orchestrated of God. And I've wrestled all week with the Lord on what he wants me to do in this service. And I felt so directed of the Lord to read out of, second, out of 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. And I'm going, to, I'm going to begin reading at verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. <clears throat> and Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measure of seed. How many know, and I'm not going to preach this, but how many know we're living in a day where we need to once again build an altar? The church has built a lot of things, but it's time to get back to building the altar. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels of water 
and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran about, ran round about the altar and filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. I want to stop right here and say, let it be known that God is still God in America. God is still God in Cincinnati. And God is still God at Life Change Church. And I pray that God is still God in your life. And that I am thy servant. And that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then, I like that word then. It tells me if I do what comes before then, I'll get what will come after then. I just said something important. You know, language is important. Let me say that again. The word then tells me that if I'll do what I should do before the word then, then I'll get what comes after the word then. And what comes after the word then is something that the church needs in dire strait today. He said then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. The fire fell upon the sacrifice. Now, there's a lot of preaching that needs to be done there that I don't have time to preach. And I'm not even sure I'm really going to preach. But there is one part that I want to draw out. A part that most people overlook and probably don't think much about. But yet, it is in the Word of God. It is there by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. God told them what to do, instructed them through Elijah what to do. And it's there for a reason. Now, time does not permit. Maybe someday we'll come back to this and do a whole series on it. I don't know, but time does not permit of talking of repairing the order of God and putting the stones in place and all those things that can preach camp meeting all day long. Amen. But here's what I want to mention. And this is a different kind of sermon. This is a different kind of altar call that will be given. This is a whole different kind of thing. But I can tell you right now, this is what the, the Holy Spirit told me to do. And if you have confidence in that, wonderful. If you don't, then go ahead and tune me out right now. But I'm going to do what God told me to do, and I'm going to do it over, over the fear of man and over what I think man might want me to do. I did not come to suit you. I did not come to tickle your fancy. I did not come to please you, but I did come to obey God and please the heart of the Father. I feel like preaching all of a sudden, but I better calm down. I'm out of time already. Now listen, there's a part of this that most people overlook, but it can't be overlooked because really it's one of the most important parts of this story. You know the whole story, the backdrop, Elijah standing against Jezebel and Ahab. And I said it that way because we know she was in charge. Let me say it again. He was standing against Jezebel and 
Ahab. And the idolatry that had seeped into the land. And Elijah had said, there'll not be rain nor dew except at my word. You better hear from God if you're going to step in front of the king and say, there's not going to be any rain or even dew except at my word. And at this point, it had been three and a half years. Everybody say three. three. Louder. Three. And a half. And a half. Everybody say that's that. a, long a long time without water. Without water. No water. No dew. Three and a half years. There on Mount Carmel, the Baalites had taken their turn and cried to their God all day long. There was no answer because their God did not exist. But Elijah stepped up and repaired the altar and laid the sacrifice. Now here's the sermon. He gave instruction. And it's, it's very interesting to me. He says, get those four barrels and fill them with water and pour it on the sacrifice. And then, after they'd done it, he said, take those four barrels again, fill them with water, and pour them on the sacrifice. And after they had done it, he said the third time, take the four barrels, fill them with water, and pour them on the sacrifice. 12 barrels of water, 12 stones, significant, the number 12. It's the number of government. I think it's interesting what we're doing today by trying to establish more and more government in the church. You realize that you can't have peace and you can't have harmony without government. You don't like to have police officers, but you would not like to have police officers if you went out there and we didn't have any. Because there'd be idiots like some of you driving way too fast. And especially like me. Then you'd have people who wreck all the time. Not going to mention any names, but her initials are Mandy Irvin. I mean, I won't ride anywhere with her. I could be having a heart attack and I would still drive myself to the hospital. I got a better chance. Help me, Lord. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve stones. After today, I might be having a heart attack. Twelve stones, twelve barrels of water. Pour them. Have you ever asked yourself, I've never read anywhere else in the Bible where they poured water on a sacrifice before. You ever ask yourself why God had them do that? Well, there could be any number of reasons. Number one, God might have just wanted to nail down the fact in the face of the Belites and the Asherites. Let me just show you how powerful I am. Not only is fire going to fall, but I'm going to consume a drenched sacrifice with this fire. Let me remind you that it doesn't matter what the situation is. Our God has enough strength. He can, he can even lick up a sacrifice that's drenched in water. So this water on the sacrifice and in the ditch, the trench, is there and it shows us the strength, the power, the might, the glory, the testimony of God. But I, I believe it goes much farther than that. Three and a half years it had not rained, not even dew. Now, the first thing I want to know is where in the world did they find 12 barrels of water? Three and a half years, nothing. And he says, 12 barrels of water, put it on the sacrifice. Now, I have to ask you this morning, if there were a drought 
of three and a half years, what do you think the most precious commodity there is? Water. Water. Listen, there are people in this day, right now, in this scripture, there are people dying of thirst and hunger because there's no crop coming up because of the lack of water and people are dying of thirst because they run out of stuff to drink. Right. Remember the little lady that the prophet had gone down and she said, I just got enough oil Come on, preacher. Come on. and enough meal to bake me a cake and my boy a cake. We're going to eat that and then we're going to drink. So obviously they had enough to eat and drink something and then she said, we're going to die. Remember that? Here is a lady that's out of meal, out of oil, and out of water. The most precious commodity that could possibly exist in a three and a half year drought is water. And let me ask you this. What's the thing that people would want more than anything else? Not rocket science here. I, I got to be honest with you. If you had a billion dollars but no water, you would give the whole billion dollars for water. Is that not true? So the thing that everybody needs. Can you? Can, can you picture what must have been going through people's mind? I cannot believe. But think about it. If there's no water and people are dying of thirst and you went to church and people were bringing barrels of water and pouring it on the altar. Well, why in the world, what kind of church is that? There's people dying of thirst out there. Why in the world don't you take that barrel of water out there and give someone a drink? You ought to be out there by the bike trail giving bottles of water out telling people about this church. Let me tell you something. Let me just say this right here, right now. There wasn't enough water to make sure everyone had a drink. But there was enough promise Come on. of rain. That everybody would have. Come on, preacher. Come on. Preach it. Um, it's getting interesting. Okay. Help me, Lord. They pour 12 barrels of water on this sack. And the reason is, number one, to prove they were willing to sacrifice what was most precious to them. Amen. Preach it. Preach it. It got real quiet now. Because the reality is, we live in a day and age where people, we don't even want to be inconvenienced, right. let alone sacrifice. Right. God is saying, let me just see if you are willing to lay down your life. Because, listen, 12 barrels of water, chances are they got the water from faithful people that had not bowed their knee to Baal. And people who had conserved water for their friends and their family, perhaps their village, some of them might have, might have even had barrels of water hidden back in their house just trying to make sure they get by. Huh? Is that not, where would they get it? They're not getting it from the sky. They're not getting it out of the river. They're, they're getting it from people who have been conserving. If they give this, and it don't rain, on, they die. Come on, preacher. I'm preaching better than your amen. This might be the last thing I ever preach, but I'm going to lay it down. 
Listen, they, they were going to give it, and if it don't rain, they're going to die. Here's the thing. <laughs> it wasn't enough. Twelve barrels wasn't enough. It would only extend their life. It was not going to give them life. We never have enough, but God has plenty. Are you willing to sacrifice the thing you need most? Water, pour it. The other thing, the reason why God told them to do it was because he wanted them to demonstrate faith that they were going to trust him. That first of all, fire would fall and they would defeat Baal. And secondly, and more important than the fire, we preach about the fire, but more important than the fire was, when's the rain going to come back? Amen. Now I'm going to take about 10 minutes and preach. They, are, they were willing to sacrifice what they had by laying it on the altar. And then they said, we're going to believe God that when we give this last little bit of water we got that we've conserved, we're going to believe God that he's going to finally put a rain cloud in the sky and he's going to send the rain back to Israel. And the fire of God fell upon the sacrifice. They drew the sword from the sheath. And the Bible says that 400 and 50 prophets of Baal died that day and 400 prophets of Asher died that day and they defeated idolatry in the land. Listen to me. If we're ever going to have a revival in America, we've got to destroy idolatry in our lives, destroy idolatry in the church, destroy idolatry in America. We worship everything but God. If we're going to have a revival, we've got to get back to worshiping God, Jehovah. And when the fire of God fell, they said, no, I'm not God. Baal's not God. Asher's not God. This is not God. Water's not God. The mountain's not God. The sun is not God. We will serve the God, the Lord, the God, Jehovah. I want to tell you this morning, I made up my mind. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm talking about the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. We will serve God, Jehovah. You're going to do that? you got to pull the sword and kill the prophets of Baal. There's some things we got to get out of our life. There's some things we got to get out of our home. There's some things we got to get out of our mind. Huh? I know it's getting late and I wasn't going to preach, but I changed my mind. I said we got to draw the sword and destroy some things in our lives. I can't wait till the next service because they're really going to amen on that part. If it comes to that part, I don't know. I ain't got no sermon. So, are you willing to trust God? The fire fell and it destroyed the prophets of Baal. Then, Elijah, I didn't read this part, but Elijah goes up a little higher. Listen to me, church. We all are going to have to move up a little higher. You are a boring crowd. <laughs> you hear me? Come on. Come on. The Bible says he went up on the mountain. Yeah. Come on. And he buried his knees and hands and face to the ground. And he prayed. And he said to his servant, go look. And the servant came back and said, ain't nothing. 
So he bowed his knees and hands yeah. and face to the earth again. Yeah. 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 Go look. Nothing. Yeah. Bowed again. Yeah. Look. Nothing. Bowed again. Yeah. Look. Nothing. Bowed again. Look. Nothing. Bowed the sixth time. And he said, there's nothing? Huh? Listen. Come on. Come on. Quit. Quit giving up after you pray one time. Come on! Woo! If the answer don't come, pray again. If the answer don't come, pray again. Come on! And he bowed his head to the ground the seventh time, and he said, "Go look." And when the prophet came, the prophet's servant came back. He said, "Yeah, it ain't much." It's not a whole lot. So what did you see? He said, I saw a cloud. Come on. Come on. Rise. Boy, I tell you, I feel the anointing Come in this on. place. He said, I saw a cloud rising off the sea, but it was only the size of a man's hand. And Elijah jumped up and said, get the chariot ready, boys. was black and the thunder roared and the lightning flashed and he picked up his skirt and he took off running and the Bible says Elijah got so full of God that he outran the horses and the chariots all the way back to town oh God do it again send the rain we need an old fashioned God in worship we need God last day with the arise of the apostate church there are still those in the cave that have not bowed their knee to Baal and have not bowed their knee to Asher there's still a handful sprinkled out in America that's going to preach the blood of Jesus and you must be born again there's a heaven and there's a hell there's still somebody I hear the sound of an abundance of prayer. Now listen to me. Listen to me. The release of the cloud off the sea began with the giving of the sacrifice of the water. You'll not see the hand of God move until your hand moves in sacrifice. Now, I want to attack you right where America lives. You're not going to like it, but I'm going to hit you right where they live. You hear me? What's the most precious commodity Americans have? Money. Got real quiet. Got real quiet. Now listen, preacher, I'll shout about rain. I'll shout about revival. I'll shout about a lot of things, but don't talk about money. Come on, preacher. You know one of the reasons why we don't see revival in America? is because over 90% of people that go to church every Sunday don't even tithe. This last month, people that come probably to this church gave more money I don't care what you give. That's between you and God. You're going to answer for what you right. give. I, don't, I want to tell you something else about Pastor Troy Irvin. I don't ever look. I, I don't know who gives what. I have no clue. I don't care. Come on. Come on. 
That's between you and God. If you do wrong, you're going to answer to God, not Troy Irvin. And you're not going to get a knock on the door from me, and I'm not going to call you and ask for your W-2s like some churches do. I'm not doing that. If you sin, then you're going to pay the price. I'm not after your money, but God's after your heart. You hear me? People give, give, people give more money in a tip to a waitress in a month's time than what they give to the cause of Christ. Hmm? It's going over real good. We, we're going to get to communion here in a minute. Hmm? Until you are willing to sacrifice, you're just drinking juice and eating wafers and going through the motions and playing church. That's all we're doing. That's the truth. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the big, the two things that hold back revival in America in the, in the church. Two things. Number one, we have not taken a proper stand against abortion. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 If the sleeping giant called the church would stand up, it would be gone. Right. Hmm? We have not taken a stand. I'm going to tell you something. The blood of the innocent is dripping off the, the, the hands of, of Americans. And it's hard for God to bless when we're killing what he created. You hear me? Hmm? I was watching one of those singing shows. I don't know which one it was. The one Simon's on. That's the only one I like. Simon's my favorite. You know why? Because I am Simon. If you can't sing, I'm going to tell you. You're, you're terrible. You can't sing. Get another job. Do something. You cannot sing. I love Simon, don't you? Yeah. American Idol is just a sham these days. They, they say nothing but nice stuff, and I haven't seen anyone got kicked off by the judges yet. They say everyone that shows up, all you got to have is a sappy story. A little tearjerker, puppy dog story. Doesn't matter whether you can sing or not. They'll let you stay because you, well, we feel sorry for you. No, they got to be able to sing. Right. I just killed the meeting, didn't I? <laughs> hmm? But I was listening to one of them, a little fella, blind and autistic. Yeah. Y'all see that guy? Yeah. He can sing. Yeah. Children, he can play a piano and sing. Hmm? Yeah. He sang that song better than Hathaway. I mean, I'll tell you right now, that boy could sing. Did you see it? Look at that. How many saw it? Y'all acting like you're Christian. We don't watch that stuff. Yeah. Brother, I saw it. It put chill bumps all over me. But you know what I thought? Most people would abort that boy because of his condition right. before we Come ever on. had a chance to see the glory that God was going to bring through him and his gift. I'm telling the truth. He's going to be blind and autistic. Don't want to put up with all that mess. So let's get rid of him. I'm preaching the truth right now. We would have missed him singing better than the guy that did it to begin with. Almost. Donnie does a great job with it. He done a job with that, that kid did. The church is not taking a stand against abortion. Not the way we should. Secondly, and it's a massive deal. We have robbed God. Right. And we make, we make no sacrifice with our money. We don't put our water on the altar. That's the truth. We want God to send an abundance of rain, and we want all his blessing, but we don't want any sacrifice on our part. And listen to me. You don't have to like it. You can go to another church that ain't going to tell you this, but I will tell you the truth. Until you and I are willing to sacrifice, there is no blessing. Nothing but drought. God set the stage with three and a half years of no rain. God set the stage with idolatry in the land. God set the whole stage, because he's sovereign, he set the whole stage to watch his people respond the right way. The question is, will we respond the right way? Now, here's your, here's your altar call. You're not, not going to like it. You're going to say, well, he's just after my money. If that's what you think, listen. First of all, you know, people go to the bar, what do you think they're after? 
Hmm? Yeah. I mean, you go to Kroger, what do you think they want? Right. They're going to give you food? Right. You got to pay for it. Right. I'm not after your money. Not at all. But I am after the glory of God. And it doesn't come only through sacrifice. So here's your altar call. I hope you love me still, but here's your altar call. We're going to, we're going to do this. And this is what the Lord spoke to me just, just a little bit ago. Um, Randall, you take this crew out sometimes to eat. Sometimes you've taken me out to eat. It costs a lot more when you take me out to eat. <laughs> a whole lot more. But don't kid yourself. It's not easy keeping up with you. <laughs> I can say this because he's my buddy. When you go out to eat, what do you think it cost? $120. Take everybody out to eat. Now, some may have a little small family. What's it cost when you go out to eat with your family? What's it cost? 75 What's it cost you when you go to Carlos and Johnny's? <laughs> What about when you take me? 200. <laughs> 200. <laughs> you may leave me. <laughs> hmm? You just go to Wendy's? I don't believe that. I've gone out to eat with him before. I don't care what it is. I don't care if all you do is go to McDonald's. I don't care where you go. You say, I go to McDonald's. It costs us $15. I don't care. Here's what God said. Are we willing to sacrifice what we consume? So I'm going to ask you this morning. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing other than God told me to preach this and lay it on you to pour your water on the altar. Whatever it costs you to go out to eat and consume the seed that God's put in your hand. And your willingness to sacrifice. I want to ask you to give it today. And instead of going out to eat this week or whenever, don't go out to eat. You say, I can't afford it. If you can afford to go out to eat, then don't go out to eat. Do one of two things. One, eat at home. Cook. You say, I don't know how to cook. Macaroni and cheese. Craft. Butter, milk. Powder, you got this thing. <laughs> Even I can make macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Two, that meal that you were going to pay, 20, 30, 50, 100 dollars out to eat, whatever it is. Why don't you just fast and pray? That God will move in America, and that God will move in our church, and God will change Cincinnati. So I'm going to ask you to give it instead of consuming it. Instead of hoard it to yourself, instead of hide that water back in the closet, say, you know what, we're going to pour it on the sacrifice. This is your altar call. And I would ask you to obey God and give it. And I promise you, if you will, he's going to bless. He's going to bless the church. He's going to bless you. You say, preacher, you, you really think that, that this is a proper kind of altar call? I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. Years ago, I was in a camp meeting, and they gave an altar call like this. It was an old holiness camp meeting, Mount of Praise. I was a young preacher, and they said, we've got these missionaries that we need to send wherever, and they need, they need $500 to complete what they need to do to get on this mission field, $500. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, write a check for $500. And I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't have. $500. You hear me? There wasn't that much money in the account back in those days. And the Lord said, write the check. And I said, God, I don't have it. He said, you, you write the check and sacrifice and lay it on the altar. I'll make sure you get it and I'll bless you for giving it. I said, all right, that's good enough for me. And I wrote the check, $500, and I gave it. And I said, Lord, that check there is $500. If it bounces, I could be looking at a lot of trouble. How many know that? 500 and above? Federal offense. You with me? I'm, I'm like, Lord, I might be the Apostle Paul. I might be in jail in a couple of days. But I wrote the check. That night I was preaching at a camp meeting and uh, had a great service, great crowd, God moved. And they gave me a check for preaching that night. 
And I normally didn't make this much, but that night they gave me a $350 check. Because I looked at it as soon as I got it, I ran to the bathroom. I, I'm hoping this has to be 500 But it was only 350 I'm like, Lord, that's not going to get it there. And I went to Frisch's, and I was sitting there eating. And a lady came to me, I'd never seen her before in my life, and I've never seen her since. She said she was at that camp meeting that night. She said, I want you to know the Lord blessed me while you were preaching. And he spoke to me, and he told me to give you this. And she shook my hand, and I put it in my pocket. When I got to the car, I turned the dome light on and pulled that out, and it was $150 cash. I had my 500 I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Now, Mandy, how much do you think we eat out in a month? A lot. And Mamma, how much do you think we eat out in a month? You've already written it for 200. How much do you think we eat out in a month? A few hundred dollars, maybe? Three or four hundred bucks? What is it? Just tell me. Just throw out a number. I don't care. Huh? You don't know? Like, do you not know anything? It's your account we use most of the time. We, we eat out, don't we? A lot. You know how you know what it costs to, to feed this crew? Just this boy alone. Stand up. <laughs> Baby Yui here. I'm going to tell you something right now. Children, he'll eat more this morning than you and I will eat all week long. You can't afford to take him out to eat. We sneak and go out to eat and leave him at home. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Poor Alex. <laughs> Poor Alex. Nah, how much you reckon we do? Three or four hundred bucks? You got a check? All right, you write the check. And we're going to pour it on there. So here's your order card. Now, after we do this, it's 1027. I don't care. I'm going to mind God. I'm going to take my liberty, and we'll get to the next service when we get there. But uh, after you give, we're going to receive communion to solidify in worship. To solidify in worship. What Christ did when he gave all of heaven's best. For God so loved the world, he poured heaven's water on the sacrifice. He gave the best, didn't he? And that's why we're here. So that's your altar call. I want you to bring it. We don't have any ushers up here with bags or anything, but I just want you to bring it. If you don't feel like the Lord told you to do it, then you, you mind God. I'm not. There's... I'm not going to think anything less of anybody. There's no pressure. There's no presumption. We're just going to mind God because God told me to do this today. I wish he hadn't. I'd much rather just make you shout and let you go home. But this is what God told me to do. So I'm going to start. Mandy, you come. Ma'am, all you come. You got them both. All right. Children, come on. Come on, children. All the children, come on. You too, Carolina. Everybody, you're there sometimes too. I got to pay for your other. You too. <laughs> You come. And whoever wants to join my family in pouring this on, you can join us. And then we're going to receive communion and go home. Is that all right? Jesus, I bring this to you and I lay it on the altar. I pour it, this water, me and my family, and anybody else that wants to. There's no pressure. There's no presumption. I don't think bad of anybody if they don't, Lord. I want them to know that. I'm not, I'm not looking. I don't care what they give. I just want us to pour our water on the sacrifice. So, Lord, we pour it before you right now. This is what you told me to do, and I've minded you. I pray, God, that there would be a sound of an abundance of rain. That, God, we would pour these barrels. The most precious commodity that we have in America is, is our money. So we, we give it to you, whether it's $20 or $200, whatever it is, for this week or for the month or whatever we want to do. I pray, God, that we'll all obey you this day. And we give it to you in obedience and in sacrifice. Lord, this is your word. This is your word. And there's great blessing attached to it. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Thank you, Jesus. Esther, I want you to prepare yourselves to serve the, the elements, please. Everybody's standing. And we're going, to, we're going to take of the Lord's 
broken body and spilled blood before we leave today, before we've obeyed him today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'll live for him who died for me. How happy then my life shall be. I'll live for him who died for me, my Savior and my God. I'll live for him who died for me. How happy then my life shall be I'll live for him who died for me my Savior and my God I'll live for him who died for me how happy then my life shall be I'll live for him who died for me my Savior and my God I'll live for him who Happy then my life shall be. I'll live for him who died for me, my Savior and my God. Father, as we serve this to your people, I pray that we'll recognize and understand the great sacrifice that you made on the cross 2,000 years ago. Lord, may we each be reminded that all through the Old Testament and the New Testament, the great requirement of worship was sacrifice. An altar had to be built and a sacrifice laid in order to approach you. And your son told us if we were going to follow that we would have to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow every day. May we do that in obedience, be people of sacrifice, people that obey your word. We pour ourselves before you this day. We pour upon the altar the water that you've given us and we receive of your broken body and spilled blood this day and thank you for it would you please break the wafer and receive of the broken body of our lord thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus Would you please receive of the spilled blood of our Lord? Drink of the cup. Thank you, Jesus. I'll live for him who died for me. How happy then my life shall be. I'll live for him who died for me, my Savior and my God. <coughs> May the peace of God go with you this day and this week. May the blessing of God overshadow you, overtake you, follow him. 
in sacrifice and love him in truth. Bless your people as we leave this place today, Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. I'll live for him who died for me. How happy then my life shall be. I'll live for him who died for me, my Savior. And Who died?